Hello, my name is Mike Westwater. I'm one of the business development managers with PowerMation. My primary responsibility is for the motion control and drive products. Today, I would like to present the setup and configuration of the Escawa Sigma Logic 7 servo drive to work with a Rockwell PLC over Ethernet IP. Here is what will be covered in this presentation. I'll start with the Escawa Sigma Logic 7 hardware connected to the Rockwell PLC on Ethernet IP. I'll show where to go on Yuskawa's website to download the AOIs and the LogicWorks configuration software. I'll connect up to the SigmaLogic servo drive via Ethernet and walk through the drive setup with LogicWorks. I will show how to import the AOIs into RS Logics. I will show how to connect the SigmaLogic to the Ethernet I.O. tree in RS Logics. And we'll finish up with some example code of AOIs for one axis in a ladder program. OK, here we have a diagram of the setup of the Sigma Logic servo drives connected up to the Rockwell PLC over Ethernet IP. We can connect to both the Compact Logics or the Control Logics series of PLCs from Rockwell. The Sigma Logic is available in both the 230 volt and the 480 volt configuration from Yaskawa. The Sigma Logic product line is specifically designed to work with the Rockwell PLCs in this fashion. Once you download the AOIs from the website, you'll be bringing down a zip file, which we then extract to create this directory on our PC. This will be used then to import the AOIs into the RS Logic software. We'll also be downloading a zip file that contains the LogicWorks configuration software. Once that zip file is extracted and the software is installed, this picture down here towards the bottom will show you what the LogicWorks software looks like when you open it up. All this information, the AOIs, the logic works, and other information is downloaded from Yaskawa's webpage here at yaskawa.com slash sigmalogic. Let's take a look at this webpage and show you where to find this information. So from this landing page, what you'll do is come down here to the logic works configuration utility and download it via this link. Then you can download your add-on instructions or AOIs for the RS logics from this link here. This web page also has uh, training videos, documents, and other help information on the Sigma Logic product from Yaskawa. Now we're going to go through the configuration of the servo drive with the Logic Works software. We'll start out with a new project. Our controller is the Sigma Logic 7 Compact. We've got a rotary axis, and our voltage is the 200 volt unit that I have here. So once we choose the project and get it created, now we can ask for the IP address that'll be used to connect to the drive itself over Ethernet. The actual default drive for the Sigma Logic will be 192.168.1.1. I've set mine to dot two just because I need to do that for my setup. If you do need to change your IP address for your system, there's a rotary switch underneath the cover here on the front and you can quickly do that. So let's go ahead and connect to our drive. So once we get connected, we get the green connection box and down here we have some information about the drive itself. So all we really need to do is set up a few things here and then we can test our configuration. So first thing we'll do is we'll go to configure our units. What this allows us to do is set up the user units that will then be used inside the PLC program. So we'll change this from revolutions to millimeters. Down here, it's given us the ability to set up the gear ratio, if any, that we have. We'll go ahead and set this one up to a five to one, which is pretty common. Over here, we have a feed constant or some information about the load. Um, if you wanna find out what you're looking for for some of the different examples, if you click on the link here, this is an example of a ball screw and it explains what configuration would be used for that setup. They also have a belt drive, rack and pinion, conveyor, uh, some different help for you here to let you know what uh, they're looking for there. So that's pretty much all we need to do here uh, to set up our mechanics. Next thing we can do is under a tab called the options, there's some common parameters here. So some things that we can look at setting up if we need to use it for our application, for example, a torque limit specific we want to use, so use of the hardware over travel switches in the positive or negative direction if we need to do that. We can also set up maximum position error to look for a fault if we uh, exceed that. Uh, under your power settings, uh, you can make some changes. For example, my system is set up to single phase, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. Uh, you can use an S-curve if you'd like to. Over on this side, there's some motor information, absolute encoder data. Uh, looks like this is looking for a brake, which I don't have, so I'm gonna turn that off. And I also don't have a dynamic brake or braking resistor, so I'm gonna turn that off as well. 
I don't need to use, do any tuning with the system that I have, so I can just leave that as tuningless mode, which actually Scala recommends that for most of their applications, that we can just run it in the, out of the box, what they call tuningless mode. So once I've got those basic things set up, I can come over here to the test run, and we can actually uh, run the motor with the drive, and that'll allow us to check the cabling, the drive to motor configuration, let us know we've got all that good to go from this screen here before we finish off the project by connecting up the PLC. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the test mode. And then we'll put in some values here for acceleration, deceleration, and speed. And you'll notice because I set the user units to millimeters, it goes ahead and carries it over to this screen where my acceleration is in millimeters per second squared and my velocity is also in millimeters per second. So once we've got that information in here, we'll go ahead and enable our servo. So we get that going here, then we'll jog forward and reverse. And as I'm doing that, you'll be able to see the actual positioning feedback and the actual speed as we're moving to let us know that everything's working. Out. Go ahead and jog forward for a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and jog reverse for a little bit. Okay, so that all looks good. So down in this uh, window right here, this move to position window, you can actually test some positioning functions. Uh, for example, what we can do is also set the motor position to zero right here, sort of start off at a zero position. This can be done again with the AOI that we'll see a little bit later to do the homing function, but for right now, we just want to set up a zero and then make a move, let's say to 200. And again, this is going to be in millimeters because of the units that we set up. This is an absolute move. So once I hit the go on this, the axis will move 200 millimeters. So I can see that down here that my position looks good, my velocity is OK, and we've moved to 200 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and move back to zero. Again, as an absolute move. So that takes care of uh, checking out our system, setting up a few basic parameters with the logic works. Now it looks like our drive and motor is functioning well. We know that this part of the system is all set to go. So now we can continue on and connect up our PLC and use the AOIs to control the drive. Now that we have our Logic 7 servo drive configured and tested with the LogicWorks software, we'll move on to the PLC side of things. First thing we're going to do is import the AOIs into the RS Logics program. Please note that RS Logics version 17 or higher is required to work with the Escawa AOIs. What I've got shown here is the directory on the PC where I downloaded my AOIs and put them in here. So this is the directory where I'll be pointing to when I go to import the AOIs. So from the RS Logics software, we do the import AOI function and we'll point to that directory that we have on the PC to bring them into our RS Logics program. As they come in, they'll be put into the add-on instructions library, as you can see here. Please note that each Yaskawa AOI has a prefix Rockwell motion instruction of the same type, and this is to help with some familiarity of what that particular AOI's function is. So for example, we can see over here, there's an MAJ Yaskawa, which is motion axis jog, MAM Yaskawa, which is motion axis move, and so forth. Also to run these AOIs in your program, Yaskawa recommends that you run them in a task that is set up to be periodic, with a period of 12 milliseconds. And this is recommended to set the RPI to match that of the Ethernet IP communications. Next, we'll bring in the Sigma 7 servo drive into the Ethernet IO tree of the RS Logic software. So we'll bring that in from the RS Logic's point of view as a generic Ethernet module. And this is to allow you to not need the motion on Ethernet IP in your PLC when using the Escawa Sigma Logic 7 servo drives. So you just set it up as we can see here with a couple of screenshots of bringing in the module on Ethernet IP. So we can give it a name, we can set up the IP address that uh, the module has, and then put together the assembly instance and the sizes as shown here. Then under the connection tab, again, you wanna set that RPI to 12 milliseconds and then make sure the box is checked to use the unicast connection over Ethernet IP. This will get the drive talking on Ethernet IP to the PLC. And then next we can move on to adding the AOI instructions into our ladder logic. Now that we've gotten everything imported into our RS Logic software, the AOIs, and we've got the servo connected up on Ethernet IP, we'll put together a simple little program here just showing some of the AOIs and how they work with one of our axes. 
The first AOI I want to bring into your program is called the Motion Axis Configuration Block. And this one is used to, as it uh, kind of states, to configure your axis. So this is where you'll set up your connection to your variables and to the I and O from your Ethernet connection. Then you just start putting in blocks that you want to use for your particular program. For example, the motion axis fault reset. You can use that to tie it to a fault reset button, maybe on an HMI, maybe after a power cycle when the axis comes up and says it's OK, we we'll go ahead and reset any faults that may be present on the drive and so on. Then the next thing you can bring in is your motion servo on instruction. That can be triggered to a servo on request uh, bit here. For example, and then when you want to turn your servos off, you can use the motion servo off instruction and tie that to a bit as shown here as a servo off request. Uh, you can also then set up a homing uh, sequence. So you may want to home your axis where it's at, and that would be the use of the motion axis home set position AOI. So you'd have a bit called set zero request, for example, and wherever the axis is at, once that bit was triggered, it would go ahead and set it to a home position of zero. Otherwise, if you do want to use a homing routine, such as approach a switch and maybe move off the switch, different speeds and so forth, maybe then uh, look for the encoder's zero position and home from there. That's when you can use the motion axis home block here and set up the different uh, variables and parameters that you can see here for the type of homing that you want to do and then trigger that with a home search request bit, for example. Next, you may want to put together a jogging routine for maybe maintenance functions or manual mode in a machine. So that we'll be using the motion axis jog AOI. Set that up for either a jog forward, jog reverse, as you can see, and then fill in the different parameters here into the AOI for speeds and XL, decel, and so forth. Next, you want to set up your actual moves for motion, and you can run either a relative or incremental move or also an absolute move. So here you have a couple of things to set up the position commanded for the AOI to do the move. This one here would be the position to command for the incremental or relative move. And you could load that with your incremental move start bit as we got shown here. Otherwise, if you have a position that you want to use for an absolute move, we could create a bit called absolute move start. And the first thing we can do is move that absolute position value into the position for the motion axis move instruction. So that's over here, the motion axis move AOI, and you can see the position comes into here, and there's also different parameters you can set up for that move, and then trigger your move with the move request bit shown here. If you need more information on what those parameters and about the AOI and its function, when you bring in the AOIs into your RS Logic software, Yaskawa also brings in the help files for all of their AOIs. So you can simply right click on an AOI in the program and select help, and then you'll get the information inside your RS Logics program for each of the AOIs, the parameters, what their functions are without having to have other manuals handy or that kind of thing. Again, my name is Mike Westwater and I'm a business development manager at PowerMation for motion control and drive solutions. In this presentation, I've shown the setup and configuration of the Sigma Logic 7 servo drive from Yaskawa to work with the Rockwell PLCs. Thank you for viewing this presentation and please contact myself or PowerMation for any further information you may need.